So if somebody comes to me with 10% of their heart function left, or, you know, 7% of their kidney function left, I will show Oh, then they kind of say, this is probably where you eventually should be. And so, you know, the idea that fruit is bad for us, you, you know how I feel. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, so I'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, Dr. Furman. And uh, Dr. Furman sees, uh, you know, a lot of vegan patients, and he, he is stating that he is seeing some of them come in with dementia. And people in the whole, you know, whole food plant based community kind of think they're, they are bulletproof with a lot of these diseases. Um, I'll start off with, uh, with Dr. McDougall on this one. What do you think um, is the, is a, is, are the contributing factors that are leading uh, people who are eating plant based? to end up with, with dementia and symptoms of that sort? Dementia, the most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's, which is the cause of 60% to 80% of the dementia. Alzheimer's, aluminum poisoning, aluminum poisoning. The research is overwhelming. But the aluminum industry is a pretty big industry. And they have, uh, they have worked for all the time I've been in this business, which again is well, nearly 50 years. Uh, with their propaganda, you know, trying to tell people it's an innocent factor. But if the people listening to this tape will take the trouble to go to the internet and look up aluminum and Alzheimer's, you'll spend the next two weeks reading the research. It's overwhelming. As far as uh, uh, one supplement or another selling something to prevent dementia, the first thing I'd ask the presenter is, do you sell supplements? then we can continue the conversation. Okay. And regarding the aluminum, what, what, are, what are the, um, I know in cooking pans, people cook with aluminum pans. What other sources uh, are of aluminum are we exposed to? Well, they've come back, come back. They were kind of out of vogue for a while and that's antiperspirants. They're, they're starting to get popular again. You see them advertised for about, well, about five years, you know, they weren't anything, they weren't any antiperspirants. There were sprays, there were rub-ons, but not sprays. They basically went out of business because the aluminum industry or the deodorant industry, the cosmetic industry, et cetera, they, they made an observation or the scientists did that, that do these kinds of things. And that is that the uh, Alzheimer's disease has a pathognomonic lesion. In other words, you see this lesion and you name the disease. These are called senile plaques and neurofibro tangles. You see them under a microscope and you can see them with an electron microscope. And uh, what they found is that the most severe cases of Alzheimer's use this portal of entry. This is a stalk of the brain, the olfactory lobe. And it, the aluminum gets up through here into the olfactory lobe and forms these senile plaques, the pathic mnemonic lesion for Alzheimer's. And so, um, there's another source. People are, every day they get up in the morning and they spray themselves with aluminum right in their face. So you've got uh, packaged products, you've got aluminum pots and pans, you've got cans, you've got industrial exposure, which used to be the primary source of inhale, inhaled aluminum. Now it's these antiperspirants. So uh, it, it's, it's due to aluminum poisoning. Is there any way to get the aluminum out of our, well, I'm sorry, I missed the last yeah, thing. Yeah, there is, there is. In, in fact, you, you'll, you'll see there are some new therapies in the news these days on treating Alzheimer's with these new biologic agents. And somehow they get into the senile plaque and they, I, I haven't studied enough to tell you the whole details. Uh, they get a 36% reduction. That's the best they can brag about in deterioration of a patient with Alzheimer's, 36%. That's what they brag about in the newspaper yesterday, if you read it. Back in 1980, uh, researchers, they used a aluminum chelating agent called deferoxamine or desferoxamine. And desferoxamine grabs a hold of the aluminum. So they treated patients with progressive severe Alzheimer's disease. This is published with desferoxamine. And they found that they reduced the progression in those treated in half. That's better than 36%. So why has desferoxamine not become a popular solution that you hear about? It's generic. It's not patentable. It all comes down to money, plain and simple. Now, there's another way to get aluminum out of the system, which is doesn't involve a shot or a doctor or a prescription. 
and that is to consume silica, not silicon, but silica. Silica is an organic silicon compound, and it's found in teas. It's found in silica water, which you can buy on the internet. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of sources of silica. So silica dra drags the aluminum, it's a chelating agent, out of the body. You can measure it in the urine. You can see that it has profound effects. So, you know, if somebody's not going to get into the medical business, doesn't need to, wants to, doesn't have any signs of Alzheimer's, and rather than going for the treatment that's been proved to work, desferoxamine, it's in the 1980s now, 40 years ago. But that doesn't mean it's not true. Then what Is they that can available do on the market? Like, can a doctor prescribe that? Does for, oh, yeah, you can buy a doctor, your doctor can prescribe it. You can buy, actually... It's, it's, you just look, go, go to Google, type images, type test, test for oxamine in. It's available. Uh, you probably have to have a prescription for it. And is that something that, you, given our exposure to aluminum and the, the dangers of aluminum with regard to Alzheimer's, is that right. something worth taking prophylactically? No, I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah, you got to give yourself 200 muscular shots a day for a year. Oh, 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 oh okay. Okay. So it's not just uh, some oral. Somebody who has early signs of Alzheimer's, this is your only chance, if you, unless you believe in the new drugs that are coming out, which cost, by the way, between 26, one of the drugs, and the other one's $56,000 a year. Desferoxamine has got to be pennies. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening, there's one underlying message of motivation. It's called money. If you think otherwise, go back to bed. Thank you. Um, Dr. Nagra, um, what, what are your thoughts on, on dementia and specifically in people who are trying to take care of themselves, are eating plant-based, saying that they're following your ideal diet? Are you, are you seeing patients with, with dementia coming in? Um, I haven't really uh, personally, but uh, but certainly I... I extended family. And, and, uh, and I've spoken a lot with my friends and colleagues, doctors, Dean and Aisha Shurzai, they're neurologists working out of California with a specific focus on this area on dementia research. Um, and, uh, they wrote the book, the Alzheimer's solution for anybody here who is familiar. Um, and you know, they, they do talk about how the vast majority of cases of Alzheimer's are certainly lifestyle, uh, based or, or lifestyle contributes to, um, there is a subset where it appears to be a genetic as well. So, um, there are cases where genetically you're predisposed and, and obviously you work with what you can and, and you focus on the lifestyle factors. And those are things like a healthy diet, exercise, uh, brain games, something I mentioned earlier, that you're challenging your brain, uh, making sure that it doesn't you know, become too lax as far as, uh, as far as learning new things and whatnot. Um, and, and just yeah, doing your best in that way. Um, obviously you can't avoid everything, um, but, but it can certainly stack the cards in your favor. You know, I, I like to add a point of agreement. Uh, the, the other, you know, I told you 60 to 80% of Alzheimer's are due to aluminum poisoning or 60 to 80% of the dementia are due to Alzheimer's. All of the, basically all of the Alzheimer's are due to aluminum is that there's another component to this and that has to do uh, with the diet. Uh, uh, people on a high fat, high cholesterol diet, uh, like for example, you compare uh, people in Europe with people in rural Asia, there's a dramatic difference in incidence of uh, Alzheimer's disease. And it's because of the food. Uh, I think what happens is this, is you end up eating an unhealthy diet, the American diet, high fat, high cholesterol, low fiber, et cetera, meat-based diet, and you get sick. And, and the system can't defend and repair itself as well. And as a consequence, you know, barriers that we have, say, for example, to keep the aluminum out are not as effective. So yeah, this does have to do with you, what you traditionally think about in terms of diet and lifestyle disease. It has to do with the meat, the dairy, et cetera. But I had to throw that part in about the aluminum because that's something you can do right now easily is you can stop ingesting aluminum. It's a non-nutrient, it's a poison. Mm -hmm.